What's going on you guys? Hope you're having a good day. I've got a really fun, like exciting, do-it-yourself video that I've been wanting to do for such a long time and I'm finally ready. I got everything figured out. Basically what we're doing today is taking the OEM push to start button that should be installed if you have a Subaru BRZ Limited or I think it actually works on most like Toyota and Subaru vehicles that have push to start. So most people replace these OEM buttons with, um, they make like a Subaru STI version and if you're in an FRS they have a, a TRD version. And they're pretty cool, but those are really like the only options out there. And I kind of wanted to come up with a way to use my own. So I decided, it's so stupid, uh, to use a red arcade button, Street Fighter style. Uh, when I throw my fireball, oh. I say, Hadouken! I ended up buying one of these buttons off eBay, just a used one and kind of deconstructing the whole thing to figure out how it actually works because you think of a button having two connections like in and out whereas this button actually has like seven or eight pins in there so i knew it was a little more complicated than that but i got it all figured out and after watching this video you should be able to use any momentary button to start your subaru brz and there she is my precious don't mind my license plate number all uh, right, you guys can see that uh, car's kind of a mess right now. It's not too bad, actually, but this was the button that I like completely destroyed and disassembled to figure out how it works. But uh, big surprise, it actually does work. I have it installed right there. When I take this thing out, you guys are going to see how sketchy it is and how this like Mark II version is a billion times better and safer and cleaner and just the proper way of doing this. But uh, yeah, so for this removal, we're gonna be removing this panel, this panel, these on both sides, this piece on both sides, this piece and this piece. This actually goes without saying, as you guys should probably already know, that you need to disconnect your battery before doing any electronics. So before I get started, let's, I mean, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna show you disconnecting my battery, so give me one second. All right, cool, so the battery's disconnected. Now we're free to start disassembling everything. Basically, you're gonna wanna take this out and not look under there, because it's disgusting. Gotta remove these two bolts, and then you'll come over here and disconnect those and remove those two screws, and then we'll go from there. Well, so now that you have this trim piece removed, um, it's really simple to remove this. It's literally just a couple taps holding it in, so you pull it up and it uh, should just click. You're gonna wanna remove these two, except normally you will have a tray right here that is very difficult to take out. So what we're gonna do is pop these things off. Super simple, just a couple of clips holding them in. Not a big deal. Same thing over on this side, but it's already disconnected. And uh, what you'll do from here, reach your hand underneath. You'll push that out. Uh, that'll be your USB. So you just push it out so you can disconnect it. Boom, and then from there, you should literally be able just to pull this whole tray out. So once you get there, remove these two screws, and then we'll be able to access the uh, seat heaters to disconnect those, as well as the cigarette lighter. All right, cool, you guys. So we got this whole middle center console thing disassembled. I'm almost embarrassed to show you guys this, but this was kind of just like the prototype on how to make it work. I was using some complicated switch. And as you can see, a metric fuck ton of epoxy and sketchy PV. Like, seriously, I, I almost don't even want to put this in the video because it's so embarrassing. But uh, I'm taking this thing out as soon as humanly possible. I was totally overcomplicating it and I just didn't really have the knowledge to do it properly. So I was just trying to like figure out a way to make it work. But now I've done my research, I've done my diligence and we're gonna be doing it proper today. So when I was disassembling the OEM like push to start button, what I found out was that it does a lot more than just connect a circuit. It's not just two wires going into a button and this guy's coming in hot going backwards. All right, okay, okay guy. What we're doing is we're keeping this in, but with all the mechanisms that are going inside this, what we're going to do is tap into the physical pressing of the button. 
All right, so now that everything is out and about, basically these are the wires that we're gonna be using. This brown wire right here and this pink wire right there. That's it. Essentially, without like overcomplicating this whole thing, the pink wire and the brown wire are never touching when your car is sitting there or it's running or whatever. The only time they ever come in connection with each other is when you physically press the button. And what happens is you press the button, those two are connected together while simultaneously being connected to a ground. I'm gonna run inside to actually put this button together, put the connections together and explain it when I'm up there. But for now, all I want you to remember are the brown wire and the pink wire. All right, you guys, so we're about to start putting this together and uh, this is like my final last disclaimer. One, this is a quote unquote do it yourself, meaning you probably shouldn't do it yourself because I'm just a guy trying to make this thing work. I know it's gonna work by the way. I'm not like a professional automotive technician or electrician or anything that uh, would give me credibility to do something like this and make a video about it. So you could use what I was using before, this giant thing like this, which is a dual pull, dual throw button, but that's like a super complicated thing and I don't really wanna get into it. And anyways, all the cool buttons are like the, just like two little like bars or whatever connections coming off them. So since there's like a way cooler selection with those, that's what I'm gonna be using and that's what I'm gonna be showing you how to do. This is the best and simplest way of doing it, so I'm gonna start putting it together and explain it the best I can. Who knows, it might just not make any sense, we'll see. But to show you guys how it's all gonna be wired and connected, let's say red is pink and green is gonna be brown. If you remember on my car, I had already wired T-tap connectors that are like vampire clips onto the pink and brown wires that are you know, used for the button. One's gonna plug into pink, one's gonna plug into brown. Great. So then each of them are gonna have their own diodes. And what a diode does is it allows power to run this way, but not this way. So no matter what, power is not going that way. And then after the diode, these will be spliced together. And once they're spliced together, they are gonna be run into one pole on the switch. And then on the other side of the pole, it's going to a ground. Okay, so you did the lime first and then the shot, right? Oh, no, 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 good. You take the salt. Take the salt. And then you take the shot. Okay. And then you suck on the line. Okay. Okay. Why don't you show me again because I'm getting a little bit confused. So, super confusing, yes. But uh, is it gonna work? Yes. Cool, so I got these connections done. I just have to uh, heat these things up. Soldering is actually a lot of fun, though then again, I am not a critic because I've never done it before. So um, if you guys have any like tips for me or suggestions or whatever, please let me know in the comments below. It will be greatly appreciated. I'm gonna go heat these up and then run out to the car. My battery's about to die and the spare's out there. So um, see you guys out there. I already have the hole drilled on where I want the button to be, but um, before actually mounting everything and putting all your plastic pieces back together, highly suggest just uh, giving it a little trial run. So, gosh, this door keeps shutting on me. So what I'm gonna do here is take this end of the connector, put those two together, take these two, um, it doesn't really matter which one goes where. Right. So that's like that, like that, like that. And then this one goes there. Cool. So, top wire right here goes to the ground. This wire gets split into the two, attaches to those. Should be good to go. I'm gonna go plug in the battery. All right, and here's the moment we've all been waiting for. Button is properly hooked up. Um, I added a little bit of an extension just onto the ground so I could just mount it easier and it's just easier to connect. It gives me a little more room to play with. But, all right. So if I am correct, which I am, this button is the OEM button. It's still plugged in like normal, so there's no difference there. 
Uh, this mechanism is, so the OEM setup is still the exact same, but we just tapped into the pink wire and the brown wire. And um, that being said, when I press this, we should have ignition. Oh yeah, step on the brake, hold her down. Oh yeah, hell yeah, so stoked. Yeah, so I'm super excited, that's awesome. And as you guys can guess, if you have any questions about it, I could turn off the car still with that if I wanted to. I still have my OEM push to start. I'm going to be keeping it right here, face out, just right underneath this flap that's normally right there. Um, so that in the case of an emergency, I can just pull it off and still have access to it. It all works. It's all good But since that's hidden behind the dash I now can use my Street Fighter style arcade button To start and stop my car and I am so excited about it So you can buy any momentary push button that so long as it's like a normally open circuit So if you literally just Google normally open push button you will be able to use that to start your car. You could have a tiny little button right there. You could have a button on your steering wheel. If you have one of those like fancy wheels, you could just use that to start your car. The applications for this are essentially endless and I'm super excited that I found this out and I haven't seen anyone do it before. So, uh, you know, I take a little pride in the fact that maybe I'm not necessarily the first one, but this uh, kind of just came to me. Yeah, so I'm gonna get all this put back together, put all the panels back in the car, basically just do everything in reverse, and god damn, I need that thing to stop beeping. But uh, yeah, in just a blink of an eye, I'll be right back. All right, so just like that, I got all the interior pieces back on, looking spick and span, spiffy as always. Um, I did leave this one off because I did want to show you guys kind of how I just uh, put this all together. So I have the button wired right here. Um, and just so you know, I found a used uh, FRS where like it's the whole tray. So I have a future mod coming where I'm gonna make this a wireless charger. That'll probably happen uh, maybe later in the week. Sweet, all right, so ground goes to ground. This fancy little one goes to that. Come on, you sandbagging son of a bitch. All right, sick. Cool. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, and just like that, we gotta push the start. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. So when I bought these buttons, I had actually purchased like 12 of them, kind of expecting that I'd break a few, take it apart, figure out how it works how it works learn to speak kevin but um yeah so we got about seven of them left over um i think the button cost like it was like a couple it was like three bucks for the button plus i think a dollar each for those resistors although i know i could buy them cheaper online if you guys want for like the price of shipping i'd be more than happy to send them to you so uh if you guys are interested in doing this to your cars i think it's a really cool like modification if you will because it's unique and you could use any button you want and it allows you to make it yours ex instead of just like oh i got a trd button or an sti button um those are cool those are still really cool and they're like official and professional and like looks oem but uh, at the end of the day i don't know i like doing these kind of do-it-yourself projects that uh, are a challenge for me and it's something new so anyways if uh if you want one of these buttons or even if you just want me to like solder together a couple of uh diodes for you uh shoot me a comment below we'll chat on like email or whatever and um, yeah, I'd be happy to get them sent out to you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it. If you learned something, give it a big old thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a big old thumbs up. And uh, until next time, uh, have a great night.